All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to get your uh, class dev box set up in a Mac OS um, X environment here. So um, the steps um, are pretty similar no matter what operating system you're using. Um, I'll, I'll try and make another video for specifically for Windows users. But no matter what your operating system is, you basically just have to get three pieces of, of software installed. Uh, you need the Git client. Um, so this is a revision control system. Um, and you need two pieces of software that have to do with virtualizations and, and running hypervisors. So VirtualBox provides a hypervisor mechanism so you can run virtual machines. Um, and Vagrant is a virtual machine or a virtual box management tool that we're, gonna, that we're using for our dev boxes here. And then if you have these three successfully set up, uh, most all these tools are meant to be used or can be used in the command line. So if you have them set up, then we can, um, from the command line, we can do things in order to uh, clone our repository to get your class dev box, and then we can use Vagrant in order to provision the class box. So this is the step that actually creates the virtual machine, uh, a dev box is a virtual machine that has all the stuff installed that you need uh, to, to, to do the assignments for this class. So it has your compilers and your code formatters and has the Visual Studio Code um, development environment that I'm asking you to use and, and, and a lot of other stuff, all right? So I've got a um, fairly clean recent um, installation of, um, of Mac OS here. I think it's 10.15 or something like that. Um, so, let me, so, so this is for the operating systems class. So uh, the URL um, that has uh, more detailed instructions for setting up your dev box. Uh, so, so if you go to the repository, look at the readme, you can get more these more detailed instructions. That's what I'm going to follow here um, in this video. Uh, so it's at uh, bitbucket slash dharder slash ta uh, slash um, cscii430 dash os dash sims okay so bitbucket.org uh, my name d hard derek harder and then csa 430 os sims hopefully i typed that right um so this is the, the actual the actual repository that you're going to be cloning and this actually has everything for the class so it has all the assignments for the class um, and it has all the, the setup for the dev box as well the the vagrant uh dev box setup so but, uh, but yeah, when you're doing this yourself, you might want to get these. So there's a little bit more detailed um, instructions for um, uh, doing all these install steps. So for the first thing, um, if you've never used a terminal in Mac OS, um, I've got a link here um, with, um, you can read through about how to open and use a terminal in Mac OS. Um, so let me just show you real quickly, it's not that tough. Um, if you've never done stuff from the command line, you'll need to do a little bit for this course. So um, you can open up the terminal. Um, if you open up your finder, which is basically your, your file, file finder, your file browser, um, and, and you look in your applications, um, and there should be a folder called utilities, which has some lesser used, and then there's your terminal. And you can start it up. Uh, by double clicking it the, the usual way that you start applications once you find them. Um, so uh, for myself, since I, I use the terminal quite a bit, I often, um, once, it, once it got it running in your dock, I just uh, right click on that and um, what is it, um, options, keep in dock, just check that so that it'll always be in my dock uh, here for me. So, so um, So your command line tool, command line uh, terminal is, is a way of, um, of uh, interacting, another way of interacting with your system. So it allows you to do things that you can't do from GUI applications. Uh, but anyway, so let's go ahead and, and get the, the Git inst client installed. So you may, or probably actually, well, you may already have Git installed for you. So, so the way to check on Mac OS is uh, you can use the which command to see, uh, but this should, you should see it. So what, what, what seems to happen on modern Macs is, there's kind of um, a, um, I don't know, like a dummy version of Git installed. So you'll find it on your path. So this just checks your path to, to see if it's on your path or not. But when you run it, um, so if you actually have it, if you try running it, so for example, to find out what version you're running, 
So you can run get, that's a get with a space, and then two dashes, and then version, right? So if it runs, that, that's fine. Um, so that means you have get, and, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the one that I have by default on my, on my Mac is, is kind of old, but that's fine. You probably don't have to worry about it. Um, but uh, instead, you might it might tell you that it's not really installed yet, and would you like to install it? And and, and um, you know, and, and you want to install it, so you can just answer yes to that, and that'll probably download it for you. If you have problems with that, and, and you might have problems um, uh, installing it when when you try to run it from the command line, uh, it's trying to install. Uh, what's it called? The the Mac OS Developer command line tools or something like that. So some other things you can try. You, you could just install Xcode. So so you might have to get into the um, the, um, the the App Store uh, and, and install um, App uh, Xcode. Uh, although that's kind of big, but but you know you can install that. Or I believe um, there's like a tools for Xcode. That might be the the, the developer command line tools. So you could try just installing that, um, right? Um, so you can try those. You just need your Apple ID. Um, if you have problems with those, you could try Brew. Brew is a good thing to have in any case. Um, um, it's it's a, 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 a different kind of package manager, so it's useful for other things. Although I believe if you install Brew, um, it will try to install the same... Um, command line tools for Mac, basically. So, 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 so either way, you still have to get the, the, the command line tools, of which Git is, is part of those command line tools. So, you know, if you have problems with this, you might have similar problems using Brew. Um, if all else fails, I mean, I, you can, like, um, just go directly to the Git site. Um, um, and... Um, if you download this for Mac, oh, um, yeah, so it, it doesn't actually download a package for you. It tells you that you could use Homebrew, so, so that's one thing you could do, but you have to um, install Homebrew uh, or install Xcode, things I've already talked about. You could try this binary installer, so if all else fails, um, you might be able to use this binary installer to install it. That would actually get you a more recent version than what I think you get by default if you get the Mac OS tools on here. But this is worth a try. So if you, if you click down into this, there'll be a regular um, Mac OS installer. So there's a hint for this on, on SourceForge. What you normally have to do to find the files to download, um, you know, binary files for download, is you have to click on Files normally. It's the way these SourceForge repositories work. Then you'll find here there's a bunch of DMGs. Those are, those are standard Mac installers, so, so you can try those out. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably try the most recent one. You know, just download that um, and try installing that. So, all right, one of those methods should work for you. Usually, I mean, usually I don't have problems getting Git. One, one, and once you have Git, then the rest of the stuff um, um, usually is no problem. So, so again, check that. Once you do have it installed, you should you should be able to find it on your command line. So, so which should, should work, and then you should be able to to check the version, right? So, um, and as long as you have a two point something, you're probably fine on a Mac OS for Git, I believe. <coughs> okay, so the next piece of software you need is VirtualBox from Oracle. So if you go to the uh, download link that I have here, um, and you go to your macOS hosts, um, this will install a standard um, um, Mac installer, one of those DMG files, okay? So this will take a while to download here. So I'll go ahead and pause while this is downloading, come back with when this is downloaded. I'll probably go ahead and, and download the other... Uh, vagrant uh, package as well while I've got my video pause here. Okay, so I'll come back once we're done downloading. Okay, um, there, I'm down, down downloading uh, VirtualBox now. So um, normally it should go to your downloads folder. So again, if you open up your file finder in Mac, um, um, you should find one of these .dmgs. So if you've ever installed software before on a Mac, from one of these downloaded files, you can just double click on it um, and it should open it up. And then as usual, then you have to double click on the actual installer, um, I believe. 
So again, I might have to pause again here. Um, I'm not certain how long um, these installers take here. So yeah, so so this is kind of normal. You get um, uh, if you keep around your your DMG installer, you can use that for an uninstall too. Um, I never quite liked the, the 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 installation method for Mac, but anyway. Um, but yeah, you usually have to double click on an icon to actually install the thing. So. Um, So for uh, VirtualBox, you should be able to just accept all of the um, defaults, you know, the configuration that it that it um, suggests for you. Um, you will have to enter in your uh, super user password. Um, oops, what happened? pause for a second here. My machine seems to have... Okay, let's continue on. Um, so you have to enter in your your uh, password for your super user here. Um, and yeah, it should install. So, um, so uh, VirtualBox um, is a, um, uh, like I said, it's a hypervisor. Uh, for running virtual machines, um, that's just what we use uh, for our dev box for our class here. There's other hypervisors, vir virtualization solutions you can use. A lot of people use Parallels uh, on Mac OS. Um, so yeah, it, um, um, VirtualBox is not really meant to be used um, from the command line. It, it's a GUI-based tool, so it installs. You normally use the the, the GUI. Um, um, that comes with it to, to manage virtual machines that are running in VirtualBox. Um, so I'm about to pause again here. Oh, oh, okay, there, now it's done. So, um, yeah, like I said, I mean, you know, if, if you're thinking about that you might need to uninstall it, you might want to keep around those DMGs, but I uh, usually just move the installer to trash. And I guess we're done there. So, uh, like I said, after you install the software, you should check there are things uh, correctly installed. Um, oh, there it was, finally. So, um, so it, it, as, as it kind of shows here, for, for a Mac OS system, um, um, the, the, this VBox manages a tool for virtual for, for doing VirtualBox stuff from the command line, um, and on Mac systems and Linux systems, it actually usually installs that in, in a place that will be on your path. So you should check that. Um, so you can ask v, which which VBox manage, okay? And that's a case matters um, from for the command line for a Mac or a, a Linux system. So you have to use capital V, capital B, little O X, capital M there. Um, and you should find it uh, on Mac OS. It's usually in, they put it in the user local bin. Um, and then you can try um, uh, finding out what version it is. So again, that's VBox Manage with a space and then two dashes um, to actually run the command line tool. So yeah, for this, you, you should have version 6.1.22 or a higher version um, if you're following this video here. So. Um, VBox uh, or VirtualBox does install uh, a GUI tool. Now uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but um, um, uh, you can try this another way to, to make certain that it installed correctly. You should find that under your applications now, um, and it should run. Um, oh, <laughs> I have a previous one in here. I thought I got rid of that. I'm gonna have to delete that um, in order so that we don't have problems later on here. Um, so, so yeah, first time you bring that up, you shouldn't have any uh, virtual machines on there. Um, so, but but you we're using Vagrant to manage our virtual machines, so you, you shouldn't be like starting and stopping your virtual your your dev box uh, from the uh, the virtual box tool here. So, but anyway, um, you know you might want to try using VirtualBox for other virtual machines you create. So, so that that GUI is there. 
Uh, but that's it basically for um, VirtualBox. You don't have to worry about, um, well, um, so the next, next tool that we need is Vagrant. Um, so, again, if you go to the link that I gave you, um, I think it'll auto detect that your Mac system, um, yeah, if you have Brew installed, you could use Brew to uh, install Vagrant, um, you know, the, the Brew Package Manager, or you can just download this. Again, this is a standard um, uh, DMG Mac OS installer. Um, you should need 64 bit, right? So, um, so I, I already downloaded that uh, previously, so I've got that in my downloads of my package manager, which you might have saw. So as usual, if you double click on that, it will start um, the installer, um, and I'll just bring up something that you then have to actually double click to, to get the package installed, the Vagrant package, which is the actual wrapper around the, the Vagrant tools here. Uh, and again, I'm not certain how long this takes to install, so I might pause. Um, you have to give it your password. Um, let's wait a second here. Let's see. Uh, let me go ahead and pause, and we'll come back here. Okay, actually that was almost done immediately when I paused. So uh, we're done now. Just go ahead and close that off. Um, yeah, it's trash. So, um, yeah, I wonder why VirtualBox didn't move the trash when I when I said uh, allowed that to move it to the trash. So, um, I don't know. Um, anyway, so again, um, I recommend um, um, you, you, you probably should go ahead and reboot. Uh, this might be only necessary on Windows machines because um, so, I didn't get a message here. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot um, my system here um, and come back after I reboot. Um, you shouldn't have to, like, like, if you have Mac hardware, you shouldn't have to worry about enabling virtualization. That's a Windows thing. Uh, if you're running like a Hackintosh on like an Intel or something, you might have to check your BIOS, make certain that you have hardware virtualization turned on. So, um, And um, you shouldn't have to worry about Hyper-V again. That's also a Windows thing. But if you're watching this for the wrong wrong video, if you're, if you're an actual Windows user, you, you, you want to make certain you have Hyper-V um, disabled there. So. Um, so then, yeah, you should check, again, as usual, that you installed correctly. So, so this should, Vagrant is meant to be run from the command line. So if you do a which vagrant, uh, you should find it in your user local bin, bin again. And you should be able to determine this is actually running vagrant, but just to do a simple task to determine the version. And as of this video, you should have version 2.2.16 or a, a larger version um, if you're watching this video here. So, All right, let me go ahead and reboot and... Um, and uh, pause the video and I'll come back. Um, um, okay, so I'm back after my reboot. Um, so if you've got all three of those tools um, installed, uh, you've got your Git client, um, you've got VirtualBox and Vagrant all installed, and if you can successfully, uh, you know, access them to, to find out the version for the command line, you're probably good to go then, so you're ready to, to do steps four and five. So in steps four and five, we're going to use those tools to actually get your dev box installed and configured and, what, and what's called provisioned. So provision is kind of a fancy name for installing a bunch of software uh, so you can use it for software development for our assignments for the class here. So um, we're gonna, we mainly install Git because we need to do a Git clone of the dev box repository. Um, so this is for my um, operating systems uh, 430 class, uh, this video. Um, so you can think of a clone as just a download. So again, this, this needs to be done from the command line. So uh, I'm going to open up a terminal again. So when you open up a terminal, um, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this um, uh, just now, but uh, it, it usually opens up a terminal in your home directory. So it has some idea of what your home directory on a, on a Mac system is. That's users vagrant, right? I mean, you know, you can, you can browse the same file system from a terminal 
that you can from like your file browser, right? So um, you can go to your home um, on, uh, let me delete this, so that was from before as well. So you, you shouldn't have like a repos directory yet. Um, leave that to trash. So you, you can browse your, your file system, you know, from your file finder or your file browser, um, and you should find the fi same file. So Macs use a version of Unix uh, based on Berkeley uh, BSD Unix. Um, so you can use the ls command to list your files, um, and you should get the same files, um, you know, whether you're listing them out from your file, from, from your terminal, or from your file browser. Okay. So as I suggest from here, um, I usually create a directory called repos to put all my rep git repositories into, right? Um, so, I mean, you could create that um, from your file browser. You could say new folder um, and call it repos if you wanted to. And then we'll see, now if I do ls here, you'll see that now we've got the repos um, directory, right? Um, I could delete it from my file browser. I could delete it from here. rmdir is the command to delete. Um, a directory from the command line, or I can I can make my my repos direct. So after I delete it, it's gone from both places now. So, um, or I could create directories from my terminal, like make directory repos, and there it's back up again. Anyway, so so, so you just need to create, uh, or I suggest that you create. I mean, it doesn't matter. You, you can clone this other places, but I'll always be assuming that you have a repositories directory, and then that's the directory that you clone your DevBox repository into, okay? So, so, so you have to change your directory. You do have to run this git command from the command line here. Um, so to do that inside your repository directory, you have to change your current directory to repo. CD stands for change directory. So now I'm in repos, right? Um, and this directory is, is, should be empty because we just created it, right? So, um, I can look at it from my file browser. There are no, there are no files in there, right? Um, and let's just do this. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. You can type this in if you're a good typist. I'll just, what is it, uh, super C or the, 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 the special key C to copy. And then special key V should paste it. All right. So this should just download all the files for the repository that you need. Um, and since I'm in repos, It'll download, the, it'll create a new subdirectory called um, CSCI 430 OS Sims, right? Um, and we can already see that in the file finder. Um, oh, and we're down, done already. Um, and, and yeah, now when it's done, if you look in there, you'll see there's a bunch of files in there, including a Vagrant file. All the assignment files um, are down there in the repository. Um, and there's other stuff, include files, libraries, and things. So, right? So that's really it for step four. Um, so for step five, we're going to do the actual work of provisioning your your dev box, which is basically creating it, creating the virtual machine, and installing all of the development tools you need for assignments for this class. So to do this, you need to, your current working directory needs to be that um, dev box repository directory. So um, from repos, I have to change into CSCI 430 OS Sims. So now that's my current directory. I can list, so, so those are all the files again um, in my current directory um, in, in the, the, the dev box, the CSCI 430 OS Sims. And then we're gonna run Vagrant up, okay? So I'm gonna have to, this will take some time. Um, we'll go ahead and start it and talk at least for a bit while it's starting to get up, starting to go. So Vagrant up. Um, this is what you normally use to start up your virtual machine using Vagrant, but the first time it does it, it does it knows that it's never been started before, so it will provision the machine, which is it will um, uh, you know it, it, what it, the, the two main things it does is it downloads what's known as a base box, which is really just a virtual machine with a pre-installed basic operating system. So our base box we're using Linux, uh, we're using an Ubuntu version. Um, for um, our development environment here. Um, okay, um, I've completed, my, my, big, my first Vagrant up is completed, uh, downloading everything. Uh, I, I switched to a different terminal. Uh, hopefully that um, won't be too confusing. Um, you, you, know, you might not have this color coding, coding depending on what kind of a terminal you use to, to do stuff here. 
Um, but yeah, just to show you, um, um, so, uh, or, or just to walk you through kind of what to expect on the very first time when you do the big run up, uh, you should see it imports the base box, um, and it'll take some time for you to do that. Um, and then after that, though, um, uh, it'll start installing some stuff, and that'll also take some time, okay? But hopefully, uh, you, you might get, you know, a, a few errors or warnings. Uh, usually, those are fine. Uh, basically, if you do get a final message that the, the class dev box successfully installed and the code server is running, you, you're, you're probably good. Uh, at least you can certainly try it out. Um, all right. So that, that's basically that, that's what you want to look for um, when you're um, starting it up. Um, um, if you do have some problems, I mean, you can always just like delete that repository directory and, and redo the steps four and five. So, so reclone the repository and try the vagrant up again. Uh, sometimes there can be some hiccups downloading some stuff. So, so you know, a second try can sometimes succeed where where a first one fails. Okay. So, um, I want to just show you one or two more things then about using your class dev box. Um, so the normal day to day, how you you cleanly sh um, start it up and shut it down, and how you access it. Um, all right. So let me point out. So, so the 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 dev box is running a virtual machine that's running a version of Ubuntu with all the development tools that you need, um, and it runs a VS Code server, which is a version of, of, of Visual Studio Code uh, that runs as a web-based uh, browser. So, so the way you connect to this, if you looked at these um, messages here to interpret these, so the, the Visual Studio Code server is going to actually be running on port 8080. So we, we forward port 8080 from, the, um, the, uh, from your dev box, which is the guest in this case. We, we forward that from there to your host machine, okay? So um, if this runs successfully, um, and if your um, uh, uh, VS Code server is running, that means, um, you know, like I mentioned, or, or as I mentioned on the more detailed uh, README uh, instructions, um, that you can simply open up a web browser. Um, so let me open up a web browser here. I'm going to have to, uh, just a second, sorry. Um, I'm going to have to, where's my, where is my brother? There it is. Um, I'm going to have to open up a new window here. So, sorry about that. I should have had that up beforehand. But um, uh, if you simply open up your normal browser and go to 127.0.0.1 colon 8080, so the, the colon 8080 is the port number. All right. And again, this should be being forwarded. If, if your dev box is running, this should be being forwarded from your virtual machine to your host machine, right? So if everything's good, when, when you go to that in a browser, you'll see the code server. Um, and uh, in a later video, I'll talk a little bit more about using the code server, but it should be up and running, all right? Um, so um, to cleanly shut down and start up your dev box, um, you want to use the Vagrant tool command. So, so I already mentioned you should not be using the virtual um, uh, Oracle's VirtualBox GUI to shut down and start uh, your your system. Um, so, um, so for example, if I if I restarted my laptop and I want to start up my DevBox, um, let me let me start up a new terminal here. Okay. So, um, so you know I would start a new terminal. Let me bring over my terminal here. Um, and normally your terminal will, will start in your home directory. So for me, this is my home directory in on this machine that I'm running, right? So, you know, as normally, you know, you first have to change into your, your dev box repository directory. So if you follow my instructions, you change to repos, um, and then you change to um, your, your CS... CI 430 OS Sims directory. Okay, once you're there, you do the bigger. Um, um, oh, I, I forgot. I, I forgot. I still got my uh, dev box running. Okay, so um, I should have done that first before I closed my terminal. So, so if your dev box is currently running, and I should be able to tell if it's currently running, if I go here, you know, if I reload, if it's still running, um, it should still reload and, and have the Visual Studio Code being responsive, right? 
So uh, to, to shut down, to stop your uh, your Vader, it's best not to, to it's best not to just turn off your computer or, or shut, down, shut down shut down your host machine. You should first shut down. Uh, you know, this is a virtual machine, so it could be a little bit picky about cleanly shutting it down. So, so you want to do a vagrant halt to shut it down, all right? From from your from your host machine, but this will shut down the virtual machine, your dev bot. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, right? So now, if I, if I try and access my code server, it'll, it'll say that it's unable to connect. So if you get a message like that, it's not running. If you think it's running, uh, it's not running for some reason. You had some problem with the install or something like that. So, all right. And then, as I was saying, um, you know, so. Whenever you restart, um, if you open up a new terminal, um, you have to just do the vagrant up again to restart the, the code server. So if you change directory to the repos, um, and then your CSCI 430 OSS.sims, and do your vagrant up, that'll restart your virtual machine, your dev box, okay? And this time it won't have to reinstall everything, so it should be relatively quick. Well, relatively quick is you know within 10 or 15 seconds, right? So there's a couple things to look at, look, look for here whenever you start up your um, dev box. So you do need to make certain that the port 8080 is being forwarded. So that's how you access it from your um, your browser. Another thing to look for, the very kind of last thing, is it'll set up what are known as the uh, the, the shared folders. To synchronize between your host and your guest, and I'm going to show that again here. So it should say that it's mounting the shared folders. And you should see that it's mounting. Uh, this is actually on the, um, the the dev box, the guest machine. So it's, it's mounting a folder called sync uh, to your repos CSCI 430 OS sims. Okay, so this is how you can share files from your um, from your dev box to your host machine. Okay. But it, okay, so now that's running again, um, I should be good to um, be able to access my dev box here, okay? So yeah, so it's running again. Um, so let, let's look at that uh, as a last thing. So accessing files created on your dev box from your host machine. For this class, you'll need to be able to do that. I'll show you why um, in, in another video where we kind of practice working on the assignments for this class. Uh, but let's say, um, so let's open up our code server. Let's open up a new file. So let's say create a new file. Um, um, and I'll say this is a test file and, and I'll do control S to save it. I'm going to save it. Um, uh, I need to save it in the sync directory. So any, anything you can save in sync directory is being shared from your host to the get from your dev box to your host system. So if I save it there, if I call it like um, test.txt, so that will save the file of test.txt um, here. Um, all right. So what that means, if, if I open up, um, or, or if you go to your terminal, and you do a directory listing, so again, how you do a directory listing will, will differ depending on what operating system you're using. So I just did a directory system list in here and I'll see but, but again this this is my terminal on my host machine not in my, in my dev box but you can see there's the test.txt there and I can access it so I, I can see you know the content of the file that I just created likewise if I create um, if I open up um, If I open up a file browser, um, so here I've got a file browser. I go to my home, my repos directory, and the CSA 430 OS Sims, and there. And, but again, this is my file browser on my host machine, the one that's hosting the, the dev box virtual machine. And there's the test.txt, which again I can open up here from my file browser, like with a an editor. Right? But this will allow you to share files back and forth. So you'll need that when you're submitting your assignments 
for this class to be able to get files from your uh, dev box um, so you can upload them to the MyLeo online. All right. Um, um, oh yeah, there was one more thing before. I, there, there's one post configuration step that you need to do that I almost forgot here. Um, so from your um, code server in your dev box, um, you need to install the C++ tools extension. So the way you do that is you go over here. So this over here is the, uh, the way you manage your extensions in Visual Studio Code Server. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you can't just install it from here because it, for some reason, I, th I think this might be a bug, but it tries to install, it always tries to install the, um, the Windows-based one. And we need to install the Linux-based one uh, for, for the IntelliSense, for your C++ IntelliSense. So I downloaded it for you, but you need to install it from a VSIX file, which is a Visual Studio um, extension file, I guess. So, so um, if, again, if that was too quick, let me, let, me, let, me, let me do that again. So if you go to your extensions, you pull down this three dots, which gives you some additional um, options, and you say install from VSIX, and then you should find it up here in your home in your dev box, so the CPP tools for Linux. So select that. Um, and it should install, start installing. Um, it might not be, even though it says it's completed, uh, might not be completely done installing. Uh, you can always just reload if you want to like restart your Visual Studio Code Server. Just reload your tab, reload your browser, um, and um, yeah, as long as it says that it's not still installing after you do a reload, uh, you should be good to go. And and if you open up the extension settings and it can find the extension settings, you're probably good, okay? You'll know whether you've got your IntelliSense installed or not if you don't, if it doesn't automatically detect problems when you're working on the assignments here, which you'll see um, in our next video. Um, all right, so that's it. Here's some additional uh, links for you. You can find these at the bottom of the README for our repository for, the, for our class uh, DevBox as well, the, the same links, okay? So some, some additional information about using Visual Studio Code if you want it, about using Git, um, some introductions to virtualization if you're, if you're interested in our tools that we're using like uh, Oracle, VirtualBox, and things like that. So that's it for this video. I hope that was useful, and I will see you in the next video for our class.